gender equality still does not exist in the workplace. And yet there are so many women thriving during the pandemic, raising children, raising businesses, and feeling amazing in their mind and their body. What if I gave you a permission slip that said, your job is to feel good? And what if I told you that the better you feel, the bigger impact you can make in the world? And in fact, that that is the magical parenting strategy that we've all been searching for. Hey, I'm Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, breadwinner, recovering hustler, and stage four cancer survivor. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this show is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life both at home and at work. My attempt is to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh, you will cry, and you may even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language, whether it's through your children, your health, or your relationships. And when you learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. It's time to ditch self-sacrifice and step into your brave zone. All right, everyone. I am really excited to have this conversation with you. So it is business week on the Mom is in Control podcast. Um, Moving forward into 2021, there are many aspects of the work that I do. And inside our Mastery Business course, which you can check out at um, heatherchauvin.com forward slash business. Uh, We now have a wait list and uh, we'll be opening doors for that program shortly. So if you're interested, get your booty on that waist on the wait list. Um, But I wanted to talk about business because I hear a lot of people um, in the online space, you know, calling themselves business coaches and working with women and, um, you know, no one really talks about why people are not succeeding on a macro level. And when you are working with women, there are huge gender um, inequalities that take place. And even when somebody has the freedom to create their own schedule, to do things on their own terms, there is so much subconscious um, beliefs and stories and programming and generational patterns that take place that not a lot of people talk about. And so I want to take a stand and that's what I'm going to be doing this week is, you know, from my perspective, because oftentimes, you know, we're thinking high level on, you know, Heather, tell me how to make money or Heather, tell me how to, um, you know, what's the best strategy for this or how do I blah, 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 build a business. And I'm all for helping women create profitable businesses that feel in alignment with the work that they want to be doing in the world um, and that are actually sustainable. And I've proved this again and again because the women behind the scenes that are inside of my mastery coaching programs, um, you know, some have really stepped up to the plate during the pandemic and have achieved the perceived cultural unachievable. And this is a conversation that is um, not liked um, because I've had lately because of the book launch, I've had many conversations on people's podcasts. And the first question they asked me is, how are you doing? How are you doing during the pandemic? 
uh, with all three of your children home, blah, blah, blah. You have the book launch, you have this, you have this. And this expectation from others that I should be suffering, this expectation that things should be hard, that things should be difficult. And in all honesty, they're not. Um, And I can tell you why. Um, Do I have challenging moments? Of course I do. But I've been preparing for this moment um, and really turned the ship around in my life as a woman seven years ago when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And previous to that, I was building my business and I was learning from one, women that didn't have children, um, or two, women that had children um, that were burnt out and also subscribed to the story and the belief that you choose one or the other. You choose a thriving business or you choose um, to parent your children. And I think I've had a lot of resistance to stepping into this space because there's not many people that I can connect with when it comes to doing both really well. And when you choose to do both really well, you, there is a primal instinct that you are physically leaving your tribe. So there are many times in my life when I have said to myself, consciously or unconsciously, um, I don't resonate with that anymore. And it can actually feel very isolating because so many women connect through drama and suffering. And when you no longer want to put any of your mental energy or your physical energy towards drama or suffering, uh, you have to find your people, right? Who you surround yourself with is going to be a game changer. So if you're in business and you you know, some of your closest business friends are in severe debt and, you know, they're barely making ends meet. That is the energy that you're going to be sucked into. And so I've had to work through. And when I say work through, it's a challenge, meaning it's not, I'm not suffering. It's just temporary, temporarily uncomfortable. Um, I had to make a conscious decision to show up as a leader during this time, um, and be somebody that people can look up to and see, you know, that is what I want to be. That is what I want to emulate. Um, because it is very easy to want to dim yourself or to, uh, tell yourself I'm not thriving or to feel guilty when other people are, are barely making ends meet during a pandemic. So today I wanted to talk about time the importance of really understanding time and valuing time, um, but also understanding your value in general as a business owner and the impact that you actually can make in the world, especially for other female entrepreneurs. So to get us started, I just wanted to read a few um, sentences from an article that I found in the New York Times. It's titled, Pandemic Will Take Our Women 10 Years Back in the Workplace. So there's a big difference in mindsets between workplace and being an employee in a workplace versus entrepreneurship. Because oftentimes in entrepreneurship, you know, it's on your own terms. You have your own um you know, freedom to create your own schedule. And if you have employees, um, and it's a female led business, you can shift, you have more control over the culture of, of your business and how you run your business. And in corporate, you don't always have as much control, but a lot of the women that I've worked with who are in corporate and they stay in corporate have really made an impact in the culture of, um, of their working environment just by taking better care of themselves, but also learning how to communicate their needs and boundaries and things like that. So I'm not saying that it's not possible to change the culture of, um, of corporate. I just believe that, you know, the pandemic is either going to shake that up and people are going to be more open to those conversations, um, or, or not. So just, understand that, you know, within your business, you can actually still have a pretty toxic, um, 
mindset around gender equality without even knowing it because you um, are carrying your subconscious beliefs into how you show up every day and the culture that you create. So, all right. Improvements in gender equality in the workplace may be another casualty of the coronavirus, as women find their place in the workforce more at risk. Around the world, working women are facing uh, brutally hard choices of whether to stay home with their children if they haven't already been laid off. Um, And then it goes down to talk about women without children are much closer um, to men when it comes to salaries, promotions, uh, but mothers pay a large career penalty. So this is like the old mentality of like career versus parenting, which comes directly from patriarchy. But there was a line in here that really got my attention and it said something around, where is it? Where did it go? Oh gosh, it was so good. It said something around men not stepping up to the plate and that men are slower to um, take on the parenting roles. So here's the thing. Regardless if you are, and we're circling all this back to time, okay? Regardless if you are a working mother, if you are a business owner and a mother, When someone says to me, my husband or my partner refuses to, I want you to realize this. We teach people how to treat us and there are gender inequalities. There are generational patterns with male and female gender roles, but you, not culture, not the culture, not the government, not your employer, if you are an employee, you, yes, you are responsible for how people treat you. Let me repeat that again. You are responsible for how people treat you. And the number one thing that I want to get across to people is If we are going to make an impact in the world with women, mothers, and really going after what you want and desire and how you want to feel in your life, especially in your business, whether that's creating a profitable business, whether that's creating more ease and alignment, whether that's creating sustainability for yourself, you need to start valuing yourself. Let me repeat that again. You need to start valuing yourself. And what happens here, like this is, this takes healing work. We're coming from generational patterns of women not being supported. And now in the middle of a fucking pandemic, understanding who is going to save us. Who is going to save us? Do you think the government is going to save you? Are you just crossing your fingers, twiddling your thumbs, sitting in the corner and and just waiting for something outside of you that's going to save you? Nobody is coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. And when I look at like female-led marches who want equality and equity and inclusion, I think to myself, who do you think organized that march? It was the women. It was the women, right? They said enough is enough. But we can't just talk about change. We have to actually change. And here's the challenging part. When you actually choose to change, you're changing your actions. And when you change your actions, your beliefs are going to change. And when your beliefs change, your thoughts, your inner thoughts change. And when your inner thoughts change, your whole freaking life changes. 
So as a business owner, in order to create profitability in your business, and profitability can be money, profitability can be time, profitability can be energy. Profit to me just means healthy, where you're getting a good night's sleep and you are really feeling like there's excess here. I can give more. I can give back to my community. I can give back to my family. I can give back to myself. That creates sustainability because you're not burnt out. You're not dying. You're not crying in fetal position saying WTF. I can't do this anymore. You're not over giving with a lack of receiving. And the alignment piece is about you really stepping into how you want to feel. You really saying, what's working in my business? What's not working in my business? And this concept of time. There are not very many women that I meet in business that say to me, I work part-time hours. I have an amazing team and it's thriving. We're killing it. Do you know what I typically hear? I feel bad for working less than my employees. I feel bad. When we feel bad, that means we're doing something bad, which makes us feel guilty. How does that help as a leader? If you are creating the culture in your business and you feel bad for taking time to dream bigger, for taking time to energize your batteries, for taking time to say, while you guys are working the business and making magic happen, I'm going to go over here and think about our next step and vision plan and step into the next one. Or I'm going to think about how I can give back to you for your efforts Or I'm going to lead all of you from a very healthy, sustainable place so that you feel appreciated, so that you have gratitude, so that you love working here. Not everybody has the risk tolerance of an entrepreneur. Most people, most people in the population are built to be employees, So if you are a woman in business and you have the ability to make an impact and to scale your business so that you can bring on more people, but you're building this beautiful, healthy culture, tell me how that is detrimental to society. Tell me. Because our time is so valuable and what we're doing with it is essential. But in order to value our own time, we must first value ourselves as a human being and say, I am worthy of feeling good. I am worthy of feeling good. Because in business, I always say parenting is personal growth on steroids. Business is personal growth on steroids. And if you are not investing in your personal development, your mental energy, your physical energy, your emotional energy, if you haven't been able to master emotional intelligence or your energy or your mindset or like what to do when you want to avoid something, how do you bust through that resistance? you're going to suffer. It's going to be challenging because your time is energy. Your time, you know how they say time is money? Time is also health. Time is wealth. Time is profitability. Time is sustainability. And you have a relationship to time. And how you show up every 60 seconds of your day is in direct proportion to your growth as a female business owner. So day one, I am here standing in my ease, standing in my sustainability, standing in my profitability to say to you, you can 
you can run a thriving business in a pandemic. And when you catch yourself wanting to shrink and play small to keep other people comfortable, understand that that is a generational pattern that women have been dealing with for decades. And how do you grow a business when your children are at home? You get very crystal clear on the high leverage action that you need to take on a daily basis. And if you are in a survival state in your business right now because of that, take this as a symptom that your business is not sustainable. Do not take it as your reality. It could be your reality right now, but say, okay, I will never feel this discomfort again. How can I create sustainability from this season in my life? So when I see article after article after article after article of women in business and women in the workplace, and I say, yes, this has always been a problem, but now because most women are ended up are ending up in a financial crisis state or burnout they're starting to write articles about it this has always been there but now they're shining a light on it so day 1 your time is valuable profitability is you stepping into how you want to feel doing the inner work to get there and understand that you are the change that you're going to see for females in business, not the government, you. You have the power to make an impact and it's going to scare the shit out of you. Welcome to my life. All right, everyone. I hope this was... um, helpful for you, a little ass kicking for day one. Let me know what you thought. Tag me on Instagram at Heather Chauvin. And if you're interested in joining us for the next round of mastery business, head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash business, get on the wait list and we'll see you on the inside.